Andre Onana is safe and sound in the UK. Manchester United has got some desperacy in the back line that is seeing them resort to a former defender who is 35 now. What is the plan for him? We get to talk about Rasmus Hoyland, whose bid is being prepared, but there are doubts about it. Welcome to the hotspot. My name is Webb. It's the 19th day of July, and again, here to talk strictly Manchester United. Quite a number of stories to look into, but also there is a lot of expectations concerning Manchester United. Let's get into it now. Andre on Nana, like we did say yesterday, he was, he was expected to touch down in the UK to prepare for his medical to join Manchester United. He did aboard a private jet together with his girlfriend and there he is uh, upon arrival in the UK. Uh, those were images taken and uh, those were, I think, shared by the Mirror. And, uh, well, he looked uh, a bit, you know, nervous, if you ask me. You know, he's an animated guy. But I feel I feel like he looked a little nervous. I think the expectations are high, obviously, uh, from a player uh, who was, uh, you know, banned a couple of months ago, was banned for a long time, and now he's ending up as Man United, as the saviour for Man Manchester United. Certainly, that's a high-pressure moment for him. But it's nothing unusual for him. It's something he can ably manage as he is uh, getting ready now to be uh, subject to a medical and later on sign his contract and be unveiled as a Manchester United player. So Onana, there is progress being done. We can say that one is done because we already got the here we go. Now away from Andre Onana, Manchester United is desperate to sign a, de a defender or to, uh, to, beef up, uh, to beef up the uh, defensive department. And guess what? Uh, Johnny Evans is training with United and uh, apparently he has impressed Eric Ten Hag. Now we are talking a Johnny Evans who played for Man United before and left to join Leicester City. Uh, but he is not even, he was never even at his prime a, an out and out starter for Manchester United. He was always I think a backup defender the way you would see. Uh, Victor Lindelof now, uh, but uh, he went on to Leicester City, of course, he was one of the more experienced players there, and uh, he, he, he went on to play uh, quite a number of games, of course not more than United, he was at Man United between 2006 and 2015, loaned in between in a couple of clubs there, Sunderland, West Bromwich, Albion, and what have you, uh, but he, he went on to uh, to join uh, Leicester City, and uh, that's since 2018, and he has played a number of games there, and of course also captaining the North Ireland national team. He's 35 now, but he returns to United now, but he impresses Eric Ten Hag a lot more than Harry Maguire ever did in the 12 months they worked together with Eric Ten Hag. So uh, it shows he has signed a short-term contract, that's Johnny Evans. Uh, you wonder what the plan is. Is Ten Hag planning to uh, get him on a permanent, uh, perhaps even extend his stay there, start the season with him? We are not sure what the plan is going to be. There are no details of how exactly short his short-term contract is. But the beauty is he has impressed Eric Ten Hag in training. We are talking a 35-year-old defender. Remember, United want to beef up the, uh, the defense, which were linked with players like Akzo Sassi. We are looking for a Kim Minja replacement since Kim Minja joined Bayern Munich. So uh, it can't be Johnny Evans, to be honest. It can't be Johnny Evans. But the fact that at 35, Johnny Evans is impressing Eric Ten Hag a lot more than Harry Maguire, it shows you how terrible Maguire was uh, for Man United. But anyhow, uh, there is a plan for him to go. West Ham wanted Maguire on loan, uh, but Man United want money. They said no, they rejected that loan move. Uh, but uh, there is hope that he will be sold by uh, b before the start of the season, before the end of this summer. Uh, he probably will be uh, sold out uh, of the club. But that's where we are. At the same time, Marcus Rashford signed. Uh, a new contract. Uh, it was never, I think, in doubt. We spoke about the details of the contract. He's becoming the highest paid player at Manchester United. So there is not so much to go into. I think it was always a matter of time that he would come and sign a contract that will see him earn £375,000 per week. There is expectations, a lot of expectations uh, of him uh, because he's not even yet at his prime. He's in just getting into his prime age as a young player. So obviously, uh, Marcus Rashford is one player uh, that we believe is uh, for the future and uh, in, indeed he's happy, he's comfortable and there was never doubt even when PSG seemed to be interested in him there was never doubt that he would agree and put pen onto that paper but guys speaking of agreeing uh, how many of you would agree to pay uh, close to 70 million euros for Rasmus Hoyland now that's where the big debate would come because there is a lot of uncertainty over how 
how how much man united should be uh, paying for rasmus hoyland now we know that the focus for united now is on a striker and rasmus hoyland is that striker that we've been looking for for the longest time but the price the asking price for atalanta is beginning to be frustrating and it's beginning to slow our progress in terms of bidding for him united are putting together a bid that is expected to be about 55 million euros for me that's already on the higher side if you look at hoyland yes he's 20 and he was among uh, the top five in terms of having touches on the box in, in the box on the ball uh, last season that means that if, he, if he's fed uh certainly he can score goals, uh, but uh, for me, I don't still think uh, he's worth, uh, you know, 55, even 55 million euros. That's about 47 million pounds. I don't think uh, he's worth, uh, worth that, that amount of money. Uh, but that is even the initial uh, bid that United are, are contemplating tabling to Atalanta. It is possible that Atalanta would uh, reject that bid because it's, uh, it's expected to include even add-ons. Now, Atalanta want, uh, you know, 60 to 70 million euros and they don't want any players added on in their deal. It's becoming a complication for me. It's be beginning to look complicated. And uh, I wonder how exactly you want to look at this. There's, there are already reports saying that United are even looking at plan B now because they feel Atalanta will not go down on their valuation of the player, who, by the way, uh, so much wants to join United. United want him badly, uh, but the price could be, I think, uh, I, I think an impediment on us proceeding to sign him. So it's a, a, a difficult situation, to be honest, uh, for Manchester United to be in now because you're talking a player, yes, we want a striker. He's a promising striker, but we want to get the striker for the right fee. You're not going to spend uh, 70 million euros on a player who is 20, only got uh, in a couple of touches in the box, did not bury most of them. He's a, he's a prospect, really. You're not going to spend so much money on a prospect. And again, uh, the debates will go on and on and you know, how much he's worth and all. Of course, the market today is so unfair and difficult. But for me, anything above that, above the 55 million euros that United is offering for me, uh, will be a no deal. I think we'll just back out of the deal. And again, uh, try to, to look for other options. Of course, we've been linked to a couple of strikers. Uh, forwards, Goncalo Ramos is one of those. Uh, we know we can get him on way cheaper, f cheaper fees than that. Uh, we have been linked to uh, uh, forward Yao Felix, who is more of a winger, really. He's not your natural number nine. We need a natural number nine. There are not so many on the market. Kolomwani, Rando Kolomwani, uh, the Eintracht Frankfurt French international. He's also not your natural number nine. He's more of a winger, plays best coming off the right, uh, of, or, or at times inverted. Uh, but we need a natural number nine. And that's for me where I think Atalanta are getting the, uh, the advantage in terms of uh, bargaining advantage because they know there are not so many number nines on the market. So United will always come desperate to sign Rasmus Hoyland. Hoyland also, remember, PSG are monitoring him and they could be interested. And obviously, in terms of having money to spend, PSG will have more. The only advantage United has is the fact that the player wants to join United. Uh, but he should be for the right fee. Uh, again, for me, it's a, it's, a, it's a conundrum there we find ourselves into. Uh, because, again, uh, that, that's a lot of money for me. That's a lot of money uh, for Rasmus Hoyland. Anything above 55 million for me uh, will be uh, a lot. Uh, but uh, what then do we do? We need a striker. He's there. There are not so many, of the, uh, many options. But also we don't have the money. We'll need to sell players to top up and be able to even acquire him for, for the money uh, that Atalanta would want. Uh, so it's a, it's a tight situation and uh, I do expect it to be a little, uh, a little bit slow if the money is not there. But also in terms of negotiations, uh, like we expected, we anticipated this, Atalanta is going to give us some bit of headache. I'm not sure how much time we will lose uh, in going back and forth for him. But for me, I'm sure whichever plan B we will have, I think uh, we might want to go for that as early as possible. If United uh, choose to set timelines and we say uh, these are the timelines we want to work with, and uh, you know, past these timelines, we are not moving. I mean, if nothing is happening, we move on to the next. We are not proceeding with Hasma Soiland. I don't think he's a Erling Haaland. He's not a Kylian Mbappe. He's not a, uh, a Victor Simhe. Neither is he a Harry Kane. He's not a player whom I feel we should, uh, you know, uh, rob Peter to pay Paul for, if you know what I mean, or rob a bank to go and sort. I don't think he's that. He, he's worth that. He's a prospect. He can work. He, he may not. There are no guarantees about him. He's young, uh, yes, but. 
he's not the most exciting player I've seen. So for me, whereas Atlanta is stubborn, uh, we can as well be stubborn and say, you know what, if you don't want uh, all our options, you know, players plus cash and all, uh, perhaps you might want to keep your player and we look elsewhere. It might be, it might be painful, slow us down a bit, but as they say, uh, better slow than sorry, or uh, you, you, you know, you be slow but sure, rather than be fast and sorry. So you better be slow than than be sorry after getting a wrong player. And Eric Ten Hag has always made it clear he doesn't want to, to to take any risks when it comes to a striker. He doesn't want to spend poorly. He wants to spend uh, the right amount uh, for the right player. Uh, and, and and I think. Uh, anything above 55 million euros uh, for Rasmus Hoyland would it be that. The add-ons could come because he's 20, you never rule out a young player. But Atalanta have got to be open to add-ons. If we say, okay, we are paying a base uh, amount of 42 uh, or 40 million pounds for him, plus add-ons of maybe 20 if we win the Champions League, the Premier League, and so, so, so many other titles, a treble, uh, that would make sense. But uh, paying 70 million euros uh, for him now as a base payment, be a complete rip off uh, for, 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 from Atalanta. But uh, that's where we are. So we are expected to table that bid uh, today. Uh, United are expected to table a bid uh, for Rasmus Hoyland. Uh, of course, what is what could slow it is the fact that, again, they are also looking of how to structure the bid. Uh, they see that uh, the player is uh, pricey. So they are looking of what for what can uh, convince Atalanta because they made it clear they don't want uh, players included. They just want cash. So that's what could slow the, the whole process. But uh, that's uh, the situation where we are. But for today, we should expect to see to hear some news, some positive news concerning uh, uh, the, the, the medical of uh, Andre Onana. Uh, we also expect to see some update concerning Zion Suzuki. He will be joining probably uh, very soon as well. Uh, the, the, of course, the game is on, uh, that uh, uh, preseason game uh, that we have against Leo, Olympic Leo, is uh, happening today. So it's one we should be expecting as well. I uh, will be uh, probably back later at around lunchtime. The game is at 4 p.m. Uh, so we'll be uh, back at uh, about lunchtime to talk about the, the lineups and the teams who are going to play. We know who played the last game uh, 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 that we won against Leeds United. Uh, we are hoping uh, to see uh, some more players given a chance in this one. Don't be surprised if uh, Johnny Evans does play as well uh, because he has impressed the gaffer and if it impresses him so well, don't be surprised if he's, uh, his short-term contract is extended at United. Uh, but the bigger preseason games to look out to look forward to are the ones in the US where we'll play Arsenal, Real Madrid, Borussia Dortmund and the like. So those are the bigger ones and those are the ones where we want to have the gist of our squad for next season. But uh, yeah, that's uh, how how uh, tight uh, things are looking for United now. I told you at this stage it's more of a game of chess. And uh, yes, if it's a game of chess, it's an end game. It's looking tight. But in Eric Ten Hag, we trust. We know he's, a, he's an end game master. And he certainly knows what he's got to do. So guys, uh, do proceed and subscribe to the hotspot. Let me know whether you think we should pay anything more than 55 millions, uh, million euros for Rasmus Hoyland. If not, uh, who should be the option? What other players should we be looking at? Uh, can we uh, gamble with Mason Greenwood, bring him back and uh, start the season with the same strikers as we hope Atalanta could lower down on their price, uh, their valuation of the player in the event that uh, they fail to get a buyer? Because obviously they also want the money. Uh, but it's, uh, it goes down to our patience and how much we are willing to wait and bargain. Uh, but Give me your opinion about that. My name is Webb. Uh, this is the Hotspot. Subscribe. I will be back later to give you more news concerning Manchester United, the biggest football club in the world. Don't you move a muscle. Keep it right here, guys. Keep it here.